Hello fellow sim racers and welcome to another one of these Assetto Corsa GT4 preview videos. Uh, if this is your first time to the second channel then welcome. This is where I hide all of the sort of additional content, the stuff that doesn't really fit onto the main channel or would harm the, the videos that do go up on the main channel because YouTube can be a bit funny with, uh, with the way some of the analytic stuff works. I've decided to preview all 11 cars in, in a race situation in addition to the main video on the main channel. So if you want to see the proper review video, then I'd urge you to go and check that out first. Just because, well, I've spent a lot of time on it. It's one of the videos I'm most proud of. Uh, I haven't quite finished it yet, so uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. We're in the wrong gear. We're not really ready to start. And we've got cold tyres. It's a great recipe. As I mentioned in probably every other video, apologies if you're multiple ones of these deep. Uh, speaking of going deep, we'll uh, go three wide into Tarzan Bend, somehow get away with it. Sorry, uh, at the risk of completely repeating myself in every one of these videos, but it is a very important point to make, is we do not have tyre warmers in GT4 European Series, which this replicates. So first lap is it's a little bit scary. What that means in terms of driving is lots of understeer on turning. Uh, because the front tyres are just not doing what they're supposed to. And you do get a little bit more power oversteer. It's not too bad because, well, these cars are down on power compared to the GT3 equivalents. So try and get the nose in a little bit early in this Aston Martin. I haven't quite worked out how I want to drive this car yet. It's not the car I've spent the most time in. I don't know what the car I've spent the most time in is. It Honestly, I've probably spent a pretty equal time because I've, uh, I've been going through to capturing footage for the videos so far. I get a big dollop of turning understeer there that I'm still having to deal with. It does feel very tricky on the first lap. You've just got to be patient with the car, which isn't necessarily my strong point. <laughs> no, uh, I think the Aston is... Uh, it, it's one of, it can be one of the better cars. Once it gets up to temperature, it's very enjoyable to drive. I can see people flocking to this quite early on. Uh, similarly with the AMG GT3. Personally, for me, the more interesting cars are the ones that we don't already have GT3 versions of, but that's just probably because I'm a bit of a contrarian, as I uh, demonstrate by stoically avoiding going anywhere near the apex. So, great things about GT4. Uh, we've got limited aero, a little bit limited power makes the racing very close. We don't get aero wash, we don't get the aero push going into corners as the uh, AI brakes are quite a bit earlier than I'd like to. Maybe the AI is smarter than I am. Highly possible. So yeah, good close racing and you can batter the living hell out of the curbs. As I demonstrate there for no reason, you don't, really don't need to take any curb there, I just did it because I can. Planted the throttle too early there, expecting the tyres to grip up and they just didn't. We're still about half a PSI down on where we need to be for the optimum range. Car is starting to behave properly and starting to feel uh, about right. That right hander we just went through on the previous lap, I almost had to lift because I thought we were going to run just straight off the circuit on what is normally a flat out corner. Getting very held up behind this Alpine, actually. I don't think it's the AMG. The let's, uh, let's go for a bit of a dodgy send there and see what we can get away with. We're going to be on the outside here, which is ideal. But let's use the opportunity to see how we can cut in. Yeah, tyres still not really doing what I want them to. That was, uh, if anyone that knows Racecraft, that would be an example of throwing away a, a golden opportunity by <laughs> trying to take the first first possible opportunity to get by the car in front. Anyhow, yeah, I am really enjoying driving these GT4 cars. Uh, I'm sure you'll hear me say through every single one of these videos uh, that I think the racing is just going to be outstanding right. here. Really not expecting that AMG to just cut across there. Let's, uh, let's send one down into Tarzan, just like nature intended. Maybe a little bit far back, so this is going to have to be braver than it probably should be. Actually, not too bad. Not too bad at all. He's still there, but we'll uh, we'll close the door and uh, remove any uh, any second thoughts by the AI there. As I said, I probably would have deeply loved to have spent a bit of time practicing for these races, so I could really demonstrate the inherent pace in the car. 
Uh, but I haven't had any chance to do that because, well, I've been making videos. Kunos has graciously given given us a couple of weeks with this pack. Don't downshift a third, that was silly. Yeah, we, uh, I think we had 13 days in total, which is, uh, again, very nice of them. Thank you very much, uh, guys, for that. And I have been using that opportunity to to get as much time to make the videos as possible. Oh, breaking far too late. Awful, awful. Big lump of understeer followed by oversteer followed by a pump from an AMG. It's, uh, that wasn't in the script. Let's see if we can get ourselves back together, stop out breaking ourselves, cruise up, get past this Alpine, which actually doesn't seem to be drifting too far away from the Aston Martin up ahead of it. I accused it earlier of being the sort of cork in the bottle. I get on the power far too early. Terrible driving on my part. But, you know, I'm putting all these videos out on release day, so uh, you can watch faster drivers do a better job with this in the coming few days. That's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. I think I might try and stay in third for Tarzan in future. Well, there's going to be a lot of future because there's only four minutes left of this race. Let's see if we can get up past this Alpine ahead and get onto the back of the Aston Martin in front of us. Because, it, you know, it's nice to have an Aston Martin in view while we're driving an Aston Martin and talking about the Aston Martin. It's definitely one of the better sounding cars in the pack. I think the... Oh, very late breaking there. That was silly on my part. I was thinking about which cars I like the sound of best, but uh, it's definitely the Camaro and the... I like the Maserati. sounds really good. KTM does as well. In a sort of different way, in a sort of wasp stuck inside a tin can sort of way. Sounds aggressive. I think the way... I think you always get the case where a lot of these cars just sound way better externally than they do internally. Because you get all the differential whine and gear train noise and, and all of that with, with it inside, which sort of takes away from the exhaust note, particularly with like the Camaro, which just sounds like thunder from the outside. Go and watch a, a GT4 European series round, uh, just, just for that. Don't know what that Alpine's doing there. It's really having to just hover on the throttle. He's taking his sweet time. We're deep into the slipstream, and, and that demonstrates one of the best things about uh, the GT4 cars is uh, the ability to just run that close through a high aero demand Cora. Cora? Cora? Cora, yes. That's definitely what I meant to say, Cora. Running a. <laughs> Running that close through a high aero corner in the in the GT3s would be would be a struggle. You start to get front end understeer as opposed to rear end understeer, which isn't a thing. Um, yeah, you start to get the front end push, and I just wouldn't be able to almost bump draft the uh, Alpine there as as I did. So yeah, this is just going to be a great pack for close racing. It's, think of them as touring cars, not as oh, as we get horrible oversteer on the way in. They're not really sure what caused that. Cruise up to this back of this Aston Martin. This isn't going to be the last lap, actually. I think we'll get one more. As you can see, I haven't really worked out what gear I want to be in for most of these corners, because actually a lot of the time I'm hitting this corner, each of the corners for the first time without traffic or without dicing, so it's uh, definitely not a track guide, guys. There we go. This is... Probably could have gotten the power a little bit earlier there. I had uh, plenty left in the tank spare. Now, this Aston Martin feels very, very racy once it's up to temperature. Not a particularly... Just had to lift out a little bit there. Yeah, it's not the most enjoyable car when the tyres are cold. Uh, some of the more neutral feeling uh, cars, particularly the Alpine, feel a lot better. Let's see what we can do under braking just to close up. 
had to brake earlier than I'd like, but didn't quite brake as hard, just so I don't run into the back of the AI. There's uh, always times where you're going to be quicker than the AI, struggling. So I'm trying to do everything now. The car feels really good. What's ahead of the Aston Martin? Oh, we've got the Ginetta. I haven't seen a lot of the Ginetta yet. I must admit, it was a car I was probably one of the most interested to drive, and I've not super enjoyed it. I keep trying to downshift a third there. Let's send it here. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Got away with that. I don't think we're going to be able to get close enough to the Ginetta to do anything. Haven't quite worked out the breaking point for that corner yet, as uh, as is probably evident. Anyway, guys, we are uh, about to hit the checkered flag. Hope you've uh, sort of enjoyed. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these run-throughs of the GT4 cars. Uh, if you've watched a bunch of them, then then let me know. I don't really know what the audience is going to do with this content. I just sort of knew that. I wanted to to give every car a bit of a, sh a fair shake, and with the second channel there, and horrible lag, with the second channel there, that gave me the opportunity to do it. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the GT4 videos, and if you're new to the channel, then uh, well, go and subscribe to the main channel because this is this is all the extra content. So you can drift these cars quite nicely as well. They're very drifty. Yeah, this is the channel for the, all the extra content, all the silly stuff, really. Uh, the serious stuff is over on the main channel. There's a link in the description, I hope, so we get a bit hassled by the Aston Martin behind. So, guys, thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.